Now the next target would be all the way up to 43.15. So let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at, so the last video, if you play the last video, this is very important for you to understand market profile, play the last video that we just, that Gerald just uh, took and rendered, and then play this video. The last video, I talked about this. I talked about how the market was balanced. The last video we just did, we were inside a profile here. Right here, inside a profile. She just did a video on this. We were sitting right there. And I said, what we're going to do is we're going to wait for the market to go from a balanced market and get into an imbalanced market where there's no resistance. No resistance. And what I did is I showed you in the last video, which I don't have to show you in this video, how I found my targets. I said our first target would be 94 and a half or 94 and a quarter. And our second target has a 20 point gap up to 15 and a half. So play that last video. I'm going to show you how I projected this target why we're inside a market profile, going from balanced to imbalanced. Now I'm going to show you how we can use a larger Renko size to show this break, breakout trend was hard trending when it, when it broke out a high value area and show you how you can get into a smaller Renko size. So what I have in front of you, I have a 11010 Renko. It's cut in half of the Renko size we show in the room. We show in the room a 12020 Renko. I want to show you how you can use smaller Renko sizes when you get into an imbalanced market before it even breaks out. So what I did is I put this level right here, this red line represents this volume profile on the first video I just did. And price was in between profile. It was in here. That's where price was right here. It was sitting at this level waiting for it to break out. That's where price was sitting. So we talked about in the last video, if we break through high value area, uh, this level, 85 and three quarters, we're looking for a breakout target, 94 and a quarter, and our next target's all the way up to 53.15. So how can we enter this trade and get into an imbalanced market and try to get this run from 86 to 94 and a quarter, this big gap. I call this the imbalance gap in the market, where this market likes to go vertical. How can we do that? We can do it by putting a smaller Renko size on my zone breakouts beside your larger Renko breakout. And here's how you want to do it. So my larger Renko size on the previous video, it showed we started trending hard right here. Right here at this level, in my last video, before this broke out, that's where the market started trending hard. My oscillator down here on my larger Renko, the 12020, has been pegged, and it's still pegged, above 100 the whole time. It's been 100 the whole time. Remember, this is a smaller Renko. I'm showing you right now how to enter off a small Renko. So we've been pegged above 100 the whole time, ever since we went into a stronger market right here. So from this zone, this quadrant right here, we are in a strong market. Very, very, very strong market. We're only looking to buy breakouts. So how can we time it then? How can we time it to the exact entry, to the exact bar for a high probability low stop trade for a possible big gap runner? How can we do it? We can do it by using the breakout of our profile. We know our profile was sitting here at 85 and three quarters, and you can put this right over top of your Renko chart on your zone breakouts if you want. There it is, 85 and three quarters. That was our roadmap this morning. It adjusted up here a little bit just a second ago, but it was 85 and three quarters sitting there on the first video. If you noticed my zone breakout, you want to look for on the smaller Renko size, you want to see which one is outside of profile if you're going to take these smaller Renko buys. This level right here 
was your dots that were going horizontal was going to be your new breakout. You notice my zone breakout inside a profile was below HVA here, was below HVA there. They're below. This is outside a profile. So what we want to do is we want to wait for this 11010 to break out and show us a yellow candle. The yellow candle signifies it's currently breaking out. Now, consequently, just like the 120 did, look how we broke out above into 100 strong. We're above 100. It gives a little cup and handle and flat lines into a strong, we've been in a stronger market ever since then. So your entry was right there at 8.34.35, just after news, about four and a half minutes after news, almost five minutes after news. The entry, plus or minus a couple ticks, was 85 and a quarter. It's now run to almost 5,300. So that's been 15 S&P point potential with a 10 Rinko, which their stop is going to be, I like going two ticks below the Rinko size. That's a 12 tick stop for a 15 point run potential. And it's still running on this breakout. Why? Because the market's imbalanced. The roadmap told us that the market's imbalanced and we're running. There's no resistance. I got a 20 point gap still that needs filled right here. That's not my opinion. That's not your opinion. That's called market structure. You don't need to go out and read these thousand page market profile books. Pierce Stoudemire, who, who developed market profile back in 1985, price profile, volume profile in 1994, it's worked for 39 years by telling us where these gaps in these markets can happen, where these possible runs can happen in the market. It shows us where the accumulation distribution has been, and then it shows us when we become balanced to imbalance where we can get in on these big runs, possible big runs, right? Well, you don't have to use a larger Renko size to get into an imbalanced market for runs. You can break it down into smaller Renko size. This is a 11010. I'm just cutting it in half. Now, if you want to use a 11313, 13, whatever you want to use, it's up to you guys. My point is, is that you can see that the software told us that's your breakout buy at 87 a quarter. Right? To the breakout, I showed you how to do that in the last video. I already knew that this is one gap fill. My first target of 87 a quarter was all the way up to 94 and a quarter. It was already seven SP points above. Now my next target is all the way to here on this runner. That's my next target. So if I get another zone breakout, a yellow trigger that forms here, entry, I already know my target. My target's 15. I'm into a tradable gap of market profile, which I showed you how to do on the last video. My point is, I can tell that these two are not on the smaller Rico size. These two are not breakout levels that I want to take. I don't want to take those zone breakouts. Why? I'm inside a profile. I'm inside of a balanced market. I can tell my tradable zone breakout is when it's forming outside of an imbalanced market right there. That's where it formed. And it gave you a 304. It gave you a whole minute or, or four minutes, four and a half minutes to set up the zone break. So if you, if you play the first video that I just did before this market even broke out, I already knew going into the breakout where my tradable gap was. So I knew where my tradable gap was going inside of it. And how you can do it, Frank, how you can do it, Frank, is you can use, Terrence and Frank, you can use your smaller Rinko size, it's the 11010, half of the normal Rinko size to see where the tradable gap is going to fill by taking zone breakouts outside a profile. So on the first video I just did here, that's where we were in this red zone. That's when I was talking about the breakout levels. And I said if we break out of this 85 and three quarters at the time where it was, 
We can use a smaller Rinko size to fire in if we get a zone break on a smaller Rinko size. Because if the market's trading hard, guys, you're not going to get a pullback on a 120.20. You're not going to get it. You're not going to get a 120.20 pullback on a hard trading market. It's not going to happen because it's a larger Rinko size. But what you can do, you can use half the Rinko size as a 110.10 or 113.13. I know a lot of you guys like using a 112.12, 113.13. That's fine. My point is I'm trying to cut, cut the Rinko size in half to show you opportunity. The opportunity is this quadrant right here. This is where it started trending hard off the 120.20. This is when it got into a strong market. Right there, right at 4.30 a.m., it's been pegged above 100 since 4.30 a.m. this morning. You can only take buy setups into a stronger market. What we can do is you can have a smaller Rinko size besides the 120. You can have a 120 and a 110 beside it and find out when these zone breakouts break. And the easiest way, like I said, to look for a zone breakout, this is not a zone breakout in a market profile. This is not even a zone breakout in market profile. Just because it closed above the market profile, that's not a breakout. Why? I want my zone breakout level to be above market profile or below. My horizontal dots start forming above it right here. That's your best breakout because you are above market profile. You're into a tradable gap right here. You're into a tradable gap up here. We're running, right? So that's how we can use, we can use the 120, the larger Rinko size to see when we're trending, right? So this is why I show in the room, I show the 120 break, zone break, but you're not going to get a retracement in a hard trending market. Let's take a look at it. Here's the 120 to, 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 to really hit this home with you guys. The breakout on the 120 happened before we broke out of market profile. The market started trending right here at 431 this morning off of our large Renko size right here on my first video. I showed you that. We were down at this level before we even broke out when I did my first video here this morning. We're already in a run. It's already starting to run on a breakout on the 120. But it never broke market profile. Yes, what I would do, Frank, is you should, you could, I would add these on top of your profile levels to help you out, especially if you're trading off these uh, smaller Renko sizes to help you. But you could tell that we were in a stronger market already at 430 all the way across. We're still in a stronger market. Look at this. The s and is pumping. It's 9 o'clock for the last, right, right now, for four, last five hours, it's been trending hard. There's been no sells. You don't want to short the market. There's been no failure trades. That's for counter trend traders. Let them get taken to the woodshed. All these indicators, typically a lot of these indicators, there's thousands of indicators out there and strategies. They're typically go against the market trend. We're different. Market profile tells us we want to buy high, sell higher. We want to buy high, sell higher. All these indicators, and like I was telling you guys, when I was a guest speaker at the Las Vegas Trade Show, there's over 6,000 traders out there. When I was speaking in front of those guys and gals, and when I was talking with them for the uh, four-day event, all the traders I talk to, all their softwares, counter trend trading the market. It's very rare for me to find a trader that was a trend trader on pullbacks. They're trying to fade this move. If you try to fade the move, you're going to get taken to the woodshed if you go against the market tone. The tone is up. We're in a strong market. You don't want to fade the move. You don't want to try to catch a runaway train. This is a runaway train. It's been a runaway train since 4.30 this morning. It's 9 o'clock in the morning. So you have all this order flow, counter trend traders getting stopped out. What we want to do is we want to look for zone breakouts and go and buy the high and sell the higher. Short the low, buy the lower. We want to short this low. 
and buy the lower and let all these counter trend traders say, oh, there's divergence. The MAC is turning up, you know, which is crazy. You know, divergence is great with trend. Against trend, it will take every single tick you have if you're not careful. So what we try to do is we try to time this by looking at these zone breaks. You can time it into a smaller Renko size. So going into this, we knew that high value area was the breakout. We knew the zone target before it even broke out. These are my zone targets. We knew these tradable gaps because of market profile. I show you how to do it on the previous video I just did. But watch. The 120 didn't show you any retracement on this move. But if I cut that in half and I go to 110.10, if I were you traders, I would have the 120 and have the 110.10 beside it. I contemplated putting them in the trade room right, right beside each other so you can see them come up next to each other to help you see this. I might even see if I can do that to squeeze it in there so you can see, but I'm trying to show you can set up on your own charts. Put the 110 right beside the 120. There's your breakout buy. Right there, 834 and 35 seconds. Your fill, 87 a quarter, high of 01 so far. Okay. If you wanted to do it, what you could do on your own charts, just save your template like this. Put a 120 up, and I put them right beside each other. That way you can see when the smaller Renko size you're looking for a micro entry off of a macro move. You're looking for a micro breakout off of a macro move. Using a larger Rinko size to fire into a smaller Rinko entry. But I would time it when you're first breaking through profile. You can set your chart somewhere like this too, where you got your large Rinko 120 20 on the left as your macro point of view. You got your 110.10 in the middle, and you got your, you have your big chart here as far as that goes. So this is how you can set it up. Um, I can actually put this in the room if you'd like so you can see it, how it works. But you can set your charts up that way, or you can just use the big 120.20 and put this on your own charts. It's totally up to you guys, but that's how I would do it.